Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're doing uh, another episode of Under the Pen, a little bit different than what I've done in the past uh, instead of drawing comics today. Uh, I just recently got an order for uh, some more stickers on my Etsy shop. Uh, these ones uh, are a set of stickers inspired by the Witcher video games and books, uh, the Witcher signs, if you're familiar with those. Uh, so just got a new order for uh, a set of these stickers. And I thought today, instead of um, maybe drawing some comics, it might be fun to show how I use the Procreate drawing software and my uh, Cricut cutting machine to draw, produce, uh, make my stickers for my shop. Uh, so if you want to pick up a set of these for yourself uh, or any other stickers that I have available, or maybe even put a, a custom order in, you can find the link to my Etsy store in the description below. So with that being said, let's go ahead and see how I make these. So first thing you want to do when making your sticker is to just bring up the image you're working with in Procreate. Uh, and the trick is, once you have your image drawn, you need to get that border, that white border background um, around it. And there are, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this, a few different methods. I'm going to show you my, my favorite method that I use for all of my stickers. So first of all, and I'll, I'll try to do this as well as I can. I'm left-handed, so I know sometimes my hand uh, blocks the screen a little bit. So I'll try to explain it first before I show it. Uh, bring my hand up around here to the top, make it a little bit easier. So first thing we're going to do is go to your layers. Uh, make sure that if you have separate layer elements, you want to merge all of those together so you're working with just one image. So it's very important, don't start putting it into sticker production until you are fully satisfied with the final image because once you merge it, uh, there's no way to undo that without going back and undoing any previous work. So you want to make sure that you are fully satisfied with that final design before you do anything else. Just word of warning. <laughs> so once you have that ready, I'm going to go ahead, get selection, and just resize, just size that down a little bit. And then what we're going to do is go back into your layers, and you're going to turn off the background color. So now you're left with just the Igni sign and that red-orange color splash behind it. Whoop. Don't want to close out of that just yet. So now we're going to go back into our layers again, and we want to duplicate that layer. We're going to take the one on the bottom, alpha lock that, because then we go into our colors, select white, Go back to that alpha locked layer on the bottom and select fill layer. And you can see the color changed a little bit behind here just because everything on that bottom layer filled up with solid white. And now once that's done, turn the alpha lock off. And what we're going to do is go into our adjustments tool and select the Gaussian blur. And just slowly drag your pen a little bit. And you can see that bottom layer starts clouding and bleeding through a little bit. We don't want to do too much. I'm going to say for this maybe around, let's do a 15%. That should work fine. And making sure that we're still selected on that layer. Go ahead and into your adjustments and we are going to select that automatic going to put that on automatic I'm um, just that the entire layer is affected at once select and then select invert and so that's going to select just that white shading that shows around the border of the image so then go ahead and pick a nice wide pen to work with. I usually do a, uh, an airbrushing pen. And there you go. Perfect white border around your sticker that you need. 
And, you know, if you have weird little pieces like this sticking off, go ahead and merge everything down. And you can go ahead and take your eraser tool. And I actually will make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And you can go ahead and just clean up any weird little bits sticking off the sides. Um, but usually there, there's not too much to adjust there. Uh, but that's how I get the, the border for my stickers. So now that we have that done, uh, you know, you can go ahead and if you have multiple ones that you're making, go ahead and do that for all of them. And then you just need to get them to your Cricut design space, uh, either, you know, on your mobile device or on your computer. I prefer working off of the computer for mine just because, uh, especially with making stickers, just because the print and cut capability seems to work a lot better off of the computer. And I feel like I'm able to have a little bit easier time adjusting things using a mouse and keyboard rather than trying to pinch and drag everything with my fingertips. Uh, just personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and send all of these files to myself, um, you know, either through AirDrop or email, whatever your preferred method is. Just get them uh, saved onto your computer and you can upload those into Cricut Design Space. So once you have finished those designs, you've uploaded them uh, to your computer and put them into a canvas, now you can go ahead and get uh, get ready to, to cut the stickers. Uh, most importantly though, you know, when, when you're resizing these, uh, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, you are going to want to, first of all, when you size these, something that I always like to do is once I have those ready, I will actually add this square shape in there. I'm going to turn this lock off just so that the size isn't affected. We're going to say So you can see the size I've made this rectangle is about six and a quarter wide by nine and a quarter high. And the reason for that is because that is uh, about the size of the, the area inside your sheet of paper where these stickers are going to print. So you want to make sure that they will fit inside of that space uh, before you send them off to to actually cut on your Cricut because otherwise uh, you'll just get an error message saying that it's taking up too much space that it can't print uh, and you'll have to go back and try to resize everything manually and uh, that's just then that, that just takes up a, a lot of unnecessary time. So once you have that shape in there, go ahead and just move that. I think keep moving that down, move that behind everything else. And you'll see all your stickers fit. The, see, and, and I already know that all of mine fit because again, I've, I've made sheets of these before. Uh, but that's just a good a good tip to keep in mind whenever you're sending off a, a sheet of stickers to your Cricut. Put down this six and a quarter by nine and a quarter rectangle first, and then size and lay out your stickers on top of it so that you know that it will actually fit inside the cuttable area of your sticker paper before before you try to to uh, to cut it. So we can go ahead and actually. Remove that shape now since we know everything will fit. Uh, and then one final note, you'll, you will need to actually attach all of this to the canvas. So go ahead, highlight, select everything, and then come over here and click attach. And that is going to turn all of these separate sticker images into one single file that will then go on to your cutting mats and the Cricut machine. Uh, so now that that's ready, we can go ahead and... 
right, so now that we have all that finished, we have our uh, digital mat ready. So we can go ahead down here, just click continue. And since this is a print and cut, we will need to send this design first over to the printer. Mine is already connected to it. Uh, we're going to turn the bleed off of this just because otherwise we don't want the shape to bleed outside of the borders too much. I uh, just want to try to keep it as together as possible. So we'll go ahead and get that printed. Once that's loaded, go ahead and push your flashing button there. And what's going to happen first is you'll see this kind of moving up and down, back and forth with this white going. And that's tracing these printed lines framing your stickers just to guarantee that everything is aligned properly so that your machine actually knows where the stickers are placed inside of that border. So that's kind of cool. It's not just a, a blind cut trusting to fade. It's actually uh, scanning those lines, learning where everything is placed so it knows exactly where to cut the stickers. So then once it's measured and aligned everything, let's see. And here we go. And that's about all there is to it. Uh, as you can see, the whole process start to finish uh, from adding your borders, sending it to the machine, printing and cutting. It, it really only takes a couple of minutes. Uh, pretty easy to go ahead and make and design whatever stickers you want right from the comfort of your own home. Uh, you can really uh, make pretty much anything you want and it's probably a lot easier than you thought it would be. Uh, so if you'd like to pick up uh, actually a, a set of these stickers for yourself or uh, any of any other designs that I have available, you can find the link to my Etsy store in the description below where I have everything available now. Uh, of course, feel free to give me a like and a comment letting me know what else you might like to see in the future, what other kinds of projects you might like some insight on. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this as well and want to see more content like this. And of course, feel free to visit the link below to check out my webcomic series, as well as all of my other ongoing projects. Thanks for sticking around, and I look forward to seeing everyone again next time.